Coming up on today's Philadelphia Eagles now, we have the latest on Hassan Reddick. People around the National Football League expect a trade to happen, and some suitors have been listed. Also, Howie Roseman sounding off from the NFL owners' meetings discussing what the Philadelphia Eagles have done so far this offseason in free agency and the thought process behind that. I'm Chase Sr. Thanks for rocking with us. Hope all of you out there are having a fantastic day. As for the Hassan Reddick timeline here, let's just get you caught up and set the foundation with everything that's transpired over the last few weeks. The Eagles originally gave Hassan Reddick and his camp permission to seek a trade. Reddick then comes out that week and says, I never asked for a trade. Ideally, I want to stay with the Philadelphia Eagles. But then, I think the Eagles' actions... And what they've done in free agency have spoken volumes here. They signed Bryce Huff to a deal that'll pay him $17 million per year. They restructured the contract of Josh Sweat, so he's coming back for 2024. They envision Nolan Smith stepping into a larger role. Brandon Graham is back for a 15th season, and now all of this trade buzz continues. And in turn, could Hassan Reddick be on the outside looking in? And could he be going elsewhere? My read on this entire situation is this, and I've said this all along. It comes down to what the price tag is from Reddick and his camp. The Philadelphia Eagles would probably love to keep Hassan Reddick. He wakes up and he gives you double-digit sacks every single year. He's one of three players over the last four seasons to have nine-plus sacks alongside Miles Garrett and Leonard Floyd. In two years with the Eagles, he has 16 sacks, which came in 2022 when he finished fourth in Defensive Player of the Year voting, and then last year in a down year for him and this entire defense, which was an outright mess, he still contributed with 11 sacks. He's the best player on this Eagles defense, but it comes down to the price tag here, and his price tag, his asking price, must be too high for the Eagles' liking. And in turn, the Eagles seem to have chosen Nolan Smith, Bryce Huff, Josh Schwett, and they signed Zach Bond, who I think is going to step into that Andrew Van Ginkle role in Vic Fangio's defense. And Zach Bond is not an off-ball coverage linebacker. He's an outside blitzing pass rushing linebacker. And as I mentioned, Brandon Graham has been re-signed. So at the right price point, Eagles open to probably bringing Reddick back. From Reddick's standpoint, his contract next year is not guaranteed at all. He wants that future financial capital, but the Eagles probably don't want to go to the $25 million number that Reddick and his camp are reportedly asking for. Here's some good intel from Jeremy Fowler on this entire situation here. He said the expectation league-wide is that he has moved at some point. The Eagles went and spent on Bryce Huff. They re-signed Josh Sweat, so they have their two pass rushers. Reddick appears to be the odd man out. He does want a new deal, but this is a premier guy that should have value. He wants a new contract, plus the draft capital that it's going to take to get him. Arizona could be a team to watch because Jonathan Gannon was with him for two years in Philadelphia. They had good production together. Arizona needs pass rushers. Atlanta, to an extent, is also a team that could be in the mix. And Jeremy Fowler is actually wrong there. Jonathan Gannon and Hassan Reddick were together just one year in Philadelphia because Reddick signed in 2022. Gannon was there for a total of two years. So the Falcons and the Cardinals, two teams to watch. And that brings me to this. Is $25 million the number for Reddick? Because if that's what he's asking for, I don't blame Howie Roseman for not giving him that deal and for still trying to work out a trade. And you know that Howie is not going to get fleeced. He's the one that does the fleecing. He's being patient here, pushing back that roster bonus to April 1 of $1 million because he wants to extract the best value possible. But 25 milli per, that's Miles Garrett bread. That's Miles Garrett money. And while both Garrett and Reddick are elite edge rushers, I'd put Garrett in Tier 1. I'd put Reddick in that, like, Tier 1B or Tier 2 here. Because you look at both of their numbers side-by-side side from 2020 to 2023, 
Reddick does have seven less sacks, right? But still, Garrett has the edge there. Garrett also has a lot more pressures, 293 to 235, a lot more hurries, 185 to 138, many more quarterback hits, 107 to 83, and has the edge with TFLs at 11 here. And physically, Garrett is just a different type of player, a different type of breed as compared to Reddick here. $20 million for Reddick? That might be a little bit more realistic. But he's getting paid 15 mil now. I'd be willing to go up to 16, 17, 18, 19, maybe 20 million per. But I'm sorry, 25 million is just too much for me. And it seems to be too much for the Eagles like it. I'll tell you this, if a Reddick trade does happen, we're going to break it down here on Eagles now. I want him to stay. He's from across the bridge in New Jersey. Went to Temple University. His homecoming back to the Philadelphia area has been incredible. But business is business. Make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Coming up next, Howie Roseman sounding off from the NFL owners meetings, talking about some of these transactions and what the Eagles have done so far this offseason. But first, let's tell you about game time here. The NFL season might be in the rear view, but Major League Baseball coming up. Can't wait to go to some Major League Baseball games, especially some Phillies games at the best ballpark in Major League Baseball, Citizens Bank Park. Sixers games in session right now as the regular season comes to a close and hopefully some playoff games on the horizon. Game time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. See the view from your seat like you see right here on your screen before you buy so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the stadium or the arena. All-in prices show your total up front so you know you're getting a great deal before you check out. You can buy tickets in seconds with only two taps. And I love apps that are easy to use. That's why I love the Game Time app. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event as well. And even an hour after it starts, it's the place to find last minute tickets, find exclusive flash deals, sponsored deals on tickets for football, basketball, baseball, concerts, comedy, theater, and more. And here's the deal. You get $20 off when you use the code chat sports. That's $20 off when you use the code chat sports. So download the game time app, create an account, use that code, $20 off your purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem the, go the code chat sports, C H A T S P O R T S. $20 off download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. Eagles General Manager Howie Roseman. We caught up with him at the NFL Combine earlier this month and once again making his comments public from the NFL owners meetings in Orlando. So let's recap it here. Of course, he was asked by the media brass for a Hassan Reddick update. He declined to offer an update. No sense in doing that because, again, comes down to leverage here, comes down to trade offers, comes down to him trying to get the best deal, and he doesn't want to reveal his plans or his cards. As for the Eagles signing of Saquon Barkley, Howie Roseman pushing back on the narrative that the Eagles don't spend big-time dollars at the running back spot. He said, I would actually say our history is a little bit different than maybe is being portrayed, or at least is being told to me is being portrayed. I was in the front office when we paid Brian Westbrook in 2012. The Sean McCoy got $9 million per year when I was the general manager. I think for us, it's hard to find special players at any position. We think Saquon's a special player, a special person. And when you're trying to find those guys, they're hard to find, especially on the open market. And then you put in the dynamic aspect about have we gone so far? Has the pendulum swung so far at this position? The guy touched the ball 300 times a year, hopefully. There are a lot of other players, skill position players, that are touching the ball that many times and have that effect. Uh, not a lot of other players, I should say. And, you know, the touches thing is certainly an interesting conversation here, right? Because I'll say it again, and I talked about this on yesterday's show, I put it out on X, formerly known as Twitter, at Chase underscore senior. I think that Saquon Barkley can be the Eagles' Christian McCaffrey. I thought that he was 
criminally underutilized with the New York Giants as a pass catcher out of the backfield, out of the slot, and as a runner, but also as a red zone threat. There were times when the Giants didn't even have Saquon Barkley on the field giving him the football inside the red area. How do you not do that? Now, they've adapted to that and did adapt to that with Brian Dable, but under Pat Shermer, it was an absolute joke how you draft Saquon as early as you did and then you just decide to not really utilize them all that much as an overall weapon. The Niners have used Christian McCaffrey as a weapon. Christian McCaffrey also, really good pass protector and blocker, so too is Saquon Barkley. I want to see the Eagles go stupid with Saquon. Wheel routes out of the backfield, screen passes out of the backfield, running routes as a slot receiver, and of course, doing his duty as a running back, running the ball in between the tackles because he's physical enough to do that, but he's also fast, explosive, elusive enough to get out to the outside. Use him as a decoy. I think that Saquon should get 300 touches. So when Howie Roseman is talking about there's not a lot of players that get 300 touches, that's how you make good on your investment. And if he's able to stay healthy, you'll make good on your investment by giving him the football because he can make special things happen. And if I'm the Eagles, I'd max out his touches, right? And this might sound worse than it actually is, but look, it's a two-year deal pretty much, 26 mil guaranteed, 13 mil per. I am running him into the ground and utilizing him a lot in the first two years of that contract, knowing that I'm paying him that, because if he ends up having an NFL Offensive Player of the Year campaign like Christian McCaffrey, that $13 million ends up being a bargain. And I think Kyle Shanahan knew that, and that's why he gave McCaffrey the rock so much. I'm going the same route with Saquon Barkley. Zach Bond, could he be in that Andrew Van Ginkle role? Vic Fangio was able to bring out the best in Andrew Van Ginkle to the point where he had a career year and was one of the highest graded off-ball linebackers in the NFL. His pro football focus grades were tremendous this past year with Vic Fangio as the DC. And Zach Bond, when you look at his numbers, he really just blitzes the quarterback and he's a part of pass rushing sets. He does not drop back in coverage as an off-ball coverage linebacker. Van Ginkle didn't really either. He had 321 pass rush snaps. He didn't drop back in coverage and had an overall grade of 91.1, run defense grade of 76.3, pass rush grade of 90.6. He generated 53 total pressures, 32 hurries, 13 quarterback hits, and eight sacks according to PFF because they don't tally half sacks. I think Zach Bond is a player who could be in that type of Andrew Van Ginkle role. Look out for that. As for C.J. Gardner-Johnson, I talked about this so much. Perfect offseason plan, perfect free agency plan, targets that I want the Eagles to go after in free agency. Part of the reason why I wanted him back, the Eagles needed that injection of swagger and confidence in that defense because clearly they lacked that last year. Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni as well. They both talked about that with Chauncey Gardner-Johnson as well as Devin White. You need that. And this Eagles defense needed that pick-me-up. And I think that those two acquisitions are going to be able to bring that. They're also very good players. Don't listen to the analytical nerds. Devin White can play. Tyler Hall, who the Eagles signed last week, could be in play for a slot corner. Now that they let go of Avante Maddox, who still is not signed with the team, Howie said that they wanted to poach him off the Raiders practice squad, and he's a player that they've been interested in for a very long time. Howie is also very bullish on Darius Slay. He said when we matched him up against some number one wide receivers, he was really good and put up some really good numbers. He's not lying. That is indeed true. I will say this, that the cornerback position opposite and outside of Darius Slay, a huge question mark. They're relying on a bounce-back season for James Bradbury. Keely Ringo, Eli Ricks are young players who have potential, but they're relative unknowns. And you look at the draft, there are good corners available who you can get in the first or second round, but the more that I think about it, the more I think the Eagles might go offensive line in the draft. Nick Sirianni speaking this morning from Orlando. Didn't say that Cam Jurgens for sure was going to be the starting center which means Tyler Steen for sure isn't going to be the starting guard. And in turn, you could draft an offensive tackle who plays guard and then takes over for Lane Johnson once he decides to walk away from the game of football. 
If you're still rocking with us here on Eagles now, go Birds. Give me your real one down in the comment section. As always, thanks for watching. Download the Game Time app for the best prices on the last-minute deals for tickets. And make sure you subscribe to the channel. Peace.